Imagine waking up to news that a storm with wind speeds over 400 miles per hour is forming in the Atlantic Ocean. Not a regular hurricane, well, but something much worse, a hypercane. This is a theoretical superstorm that scientists believe could form under very rare and extreme conditions. It would be like a hurricane, but way stronger, larger, and much more dangerous. And in this hypothetical, one is now brewing just off the coast. For a hypercane to form, ocean temperatures would have to rise to around 113 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way hotter than anything we've seen in the Atlantic. To compare, most hurricanes begin when ocean water is around 80 degrees. That means something drastic would have to happen, like an underwater volcanic eruption or some kind of massive heat spike in the ocean. Once water reaches that level of heat, the atmosphere above it would become super unstable. The result could be a vertical column of rising air so powerful that it breaks into the upper layers of the atmosphere. This new storm would grow fast, much faster than any hurricane we've seen before. It could stretch for hundreds of miles and keep pulling in energy from the hot ocean below. Regular hurricanes lose power when they hit land, but a hypercane could stay strong much longer and cover more ground. It wouldn't just be a huge storm, it would be a machine feeding itself and growing stronger by the hour. Now imagine this hypercane spinning over the Atlantic, the pressure in its center would be so low that the winds around it would be pulled in at over 400 miles per hour, faster than the strongest tornadoes. These kinds of winds could rip roofs off buildings, snap steel towers, and turn debris into deadly projectiles. And this isn't just limited to coastal areas. A storm this powerful could keep pushing inland for hundreds of miles, flattening cities, towns, and infrastructure in its path. What makes this scarier is the storm surge. A hypercane could push walls of water inland, possibly reaching over 100 feet high. That's more than a 10-story building. Entire coastal cities could be underwater in hours. It wouldn't just be about evacuating. It would be about escaping before roads, bridges, and airports are swallowed up. The rainfall could also be record-breaking. Some scientists believe a hypercane could dump more rain in a single day than most hurricanes release in a week. This kind of storm would not just damage homes and roads, it would completely overwhelm emergency response systems. Power grids would fail, cell towers would collapse, and with so much flooding and wind damage, it might be weeks before help could reach some areas. And all of this is just what could happen in the first few days of a hypercane forming and making landfall along the Atlantic coast. Once the hypercane makes landfall and starts tearing through the east coast, the aftermath would look like something out of a science fiction movie. Cities near the coast would be hit first, and most of them wouldn't stand a chance against winds that strong. Skyscrapers could bend or break, glass would be flying everywhere, and even reinforced concrete structures might not hold up. But what makes this situation even more dangerous is what happens next after the wind and storm surge, it's the total shutdown of daily life. Millions of people could be without power almost instantly. Power plants near the coastline would flood or shut down as a precaution, but even backup generators might fail. With no electricity, communication breaks down. Cell phones stop working. Internet service disappears, and even emergency radio systems could be knocked offline. It would be very hard to get information out, or in. Gas stations would be closed, grocery stores would be empty, and clean drinking water could be nearly impossible to find. A storm this powerful would rip apart water treatment plants, flood sewage systems, and contaminate freshwater supplies across entire regions. Hospitals would be pushed beyond their limits, especially in smaller towns. With roads blocked by fallen trees, crushed vehicles, and flooding, rescue teams might take days just to reach the worst hit areas, but the damage wouldn't stop at buildings and roads. Farmland across the eastern United States could be destroyed. Crops would be flattened, soil washed away, and livestock killed or scattered. This would throw off the food supply chain in a huge way. Everything from corn and wheat to vegetables and fruit could see shortages within days. Grocery stores that still had power would be picked clean fast. The effects wouldn't just be felt locally. The ripple effect would travel across the country. Airports would shut down, both because of flooding and because there wouldn't be working radar or functioning control towers. Transportation of goods would grind to a halt, Ports along the East Coast, which handle millions of tons of cargo every year, would be wiped out or underwater. That means delays in everything from food and medicine to electronics and basic supplies. At the same time, the hypercane wouldn't just vanish once it moves inland. It would slowly weaken over time, but because it started off with so much energy, it could still bring major destruction as it moves. 
cities hundreds of miles from the coast, places like Atlanta, Pittsburgh, even parts of the Midwest, you know, we could see extreme rain, heavy winds, and dangerous days flooding. Rivers would overflow, dams could fail, and small towns far from the ocean would suddenly be in crisis. On top of all this, toxic spills and chemical leaks would become a real threat. Refineries and factories near the water could leak oil, gas, or industrial waste into floodwaters. These contaminants would spread fast, affecting not only marine life, but also human health. Cleanup would be massive, expensive, and take years to fully complete. And while all of this chaos is unfolding on the ground, scientists and emergency officials would be racing to understand whether another hypercane could be forming behind the first one, especially if the ocean waters stayed hot. In the days and weeks after the hypercane moved inland and, and lost strength, the real long-term consequences would start to reveal themselves. One of the biggest issues would be displacement. Millions of people from coastal cities like Miami, Charleston, New York City, and Boston could be forced to evacuate with no clear timeline for when or if they could return. Entire neighborhoods might be gone, not just damaged, but wiped completely off the map. Emergency shelters in nearby states would be overwhelmed. Schools, sports arenas, and community centers would be turned into makeshift homes for families that had lost everything. Sanitation would become a growing concern. Without proper plumbing or waste management, even shelters could become health risks. Disease outbreaks could begin to spread, especially in crowded and humid conditions. Insurance companies would be flooded with claims, not just for home damage, but for destroyed cars, lost businesses, and agricultural losses. But with so many claims coming in at once, the entire system could start to buckle. People might wait weeks or even months for the financial support they need just to rebuild. Many small businesses would shut down permanently. The local economy in the hardest hit regions could collapse entirely, leaving people jobless and unsure of what to do next. Meanwhile, the environmental damage wouldn't be limited to oil spills and broken infrastructure. The coastline itself would be reshaped. Barrier islands could be washed away. Wetlands and marshes, which serve as natural storm buffers, would be torn up or permanently eroded. Wildlife that depends on these habitats, aquatic birds, fish, amphibians, would either die off or flee the area entirely. Some ecosystems might never fully recover. Fisheries along the east coast would be devastated. Boats would be destroyed, docks ripped apart, and processing plants flooded. Saltwater intrusion from the storm surge would poison freshwater systems, ruining habitats and killing off fish populations. The fishing industry in places like Maine and the Carolinas could be crippled for years, leading to job losses and food shortages in surrounding areas. Then there's the mental impact. People who survive events like this often suffer from long-term trauma. Anxiety, depression, and PTSD are all common. Kids who live through these kinds of disasters might have trouble focusing in school and adults might struggle to go back to their normal routines. Recovery is not just about rebuilding buildings, it's also about healing minds, and that takes much longer. International aid might be needed, especially if the federal government struggled to keep up with the demand for support. Countries around the world could step in with supplies, financial aid, and rescue teams. Global media would follow the story closely, and the world would be watching to see how the United States handled one of the most powerful storms in history. But beyond the headlines, experts would begin to ask tough questions. Could this happen again? Were early warning systems fast enough? Did climate change play a role in making the storm more intense? Researchers would dig into ocean temperature records, wind patterns, and pressure systems to try to understand exactly how the hypercane had formed and, and whether more might be on the way. After the damage, the flooding, and the humanitarian crisis, attention would slowly shift toward the future. Scientists, engineers, and world leaders would gather to figure out what this hypercane really meant. One of the biggest takeaways would be the need to seriously rethink coastal development. Cities that were once seen as booming coastal hubs might suddenly be considered too risky to rebuild. Discussions would begin about turning certain zones into permanent evacuation areas or rebuilding them as green buffer zones instead of residential neighborhoods. Governments might start enforcing stricter building codes requiring structures in storm-prone areas to withstand stronger winds and higher floods. Infrastructure, planning would change too. Power lines could be moved underground. Sea walls might be built taller and wider. And emergency communication networks would be upgraded. More advanced radar and satellite technology would be funded to help detect changes in the atmosphere that might point to another hypercane forming in the future. 
At the same time, global conversations around climate change would become much more urgent. A storm like this wouldn't just be seen as a one-time disaster. It would be viewed as a possible preview of what could come next if ocean temperatures continue to rise. World leaders would face pressure to take stronger action, not just in reducing carbon emissions, but in preparing for even more extreme weather events. The storm would also reshape how people think about weather in general. For most of history, hurricanes have been categorized using the Saffir-Simpson scale, which goes from category one to category five. But a hypercane would go far beyond that. Meteorologists might consider creating a new classification system, something that acknowledges how this kind of storm breaks all the usual rules. In, in schools, kids would learn about the hypercane, the way past generations learned about major earthquakes or world wars as a moment in history that changed everything. Documentaries would be made, books would be written, and survivors would tell their stories for years to come. In some cities, memorials might be built to honor the lives lost and the communities forever changed. Economically, recovery would take years. Insurance rates for coastal areas would skyrocket, and some companies might refuse to cover those regions at all. Tourism in coastal cities would slow down, especially in places where popular beaches or boardwalks were damaged beyond recognition. Farming regions affected by saltwater contamination or flood damage would struggle to grow crops, adding pressure to food supply chains already stretched thin. But as hard as it would be, the world would also adapt. New technologies might emerge to help manage storms, things like artificial cloud seeding, sea surface cooling, or better global weather control models. Scientists would likely work together across borders, combining research to better understand what triggered the hypercane and how to prevent another. Most importantly, people would not forget. A hypercane hitting the Atlantic Ocean wouldn't just be a disaster, it would be a warning, a reminder of how powerful nature can be and how closely human life is tied to the balance of our environment. The damage would be real. The loss would be massive, but the lessons learned might just help protect future generations from facing something even worse. Yeah. Thanks for sticking with me through this intense hypothetical. Let me know what you think would happen if a hypercane ever formed in real life. And don't forget to check out our other video on rare weather events that science says could still happen.